Hello on the Tourist Video Blog channel. This video is additional material for the two videos I make about my IKEA kitchen building in the van conversion. If you didn't see these videos, it's a nice idea to watch them first, so you will have the idea what I'm talking about. The links will be right there or in the description. In these two videos, people ask me a lot of questions about my kitchen build, so I decided to make this video to answer the most common questions about my build. So, let's start. The first question was about durability of these IKEA cabinets, and some people fairly say that they are not strong enough for the RV one conversion style of use. The vibration will kill the joints between the cabinet pieces and it will break apart. Of course, of course this cabinet is not built for this purpose. None of the house kind of furniture built for this purpose. That's why you need to reinforce all the pieces and all the joints to the very heavy duty use. Like there, and there, and there, also back there and there, and many more. With this kind of reinforcement it will last long, I hope. Second question it was about the moisture and how the cabinets will hold them. And I'm not an expert, but uh, this cabinet is already made for the kitchen, so they must not afraid of the moist that much. I think the small water drops will be fine. It's uh, very well laminated panels and no visible wooden stuff around on the outside where the water could get them. Next question was about how I plan to hold my drawers in place while I'm driving and turning so they not open and get all my stuff uh, around the van. So you see this uh, drawer mechanism take a fair amount of force to open. So if I open this this way and you see, it's trying to get back, and it's a fair amount of force, it, you need to put some strength to it. And after this line, it simply opens without any resistance anymore. So, I hope it will be enough, but if not, I will add some kind of child locks uh, or RV stuff for holding these drawers in place. Uh, you will see it in next videos if I will do that. Some people mentioned that I got wrong the sizes of IKEA bottom cabinets for the kitchen. Sorry, uh, this was my mistake. Uh, you actually can get uh, not only standard but also short, like not very deep bottom cabinets. Uh, like I bought top cabinets, the same size. They actually are very similar, but the bottom cabinets doesn't have a top side part of the wood, uh, but I still still think this one is better because um, uh, you could get a more vari variety of the heights of these cabinets and I got the 1 meter height uh, cabinets and you couldn't get this size as the bottom cabinets, I hope this time I am not wrong. Uh, only 80 centimeters and also they uh, requires the base 8 centimeters from the floor so you will get standard 88 centimeters plus countertop and it's standard kitchen but I don't want to lost this bottom 8 centimeters part it just will be empty and by adding uh, 10 centimeters and I am tall guy so it's not problem for me one meter kitchen is fairly nice and because of that I could get my fridge under the sink I have space there and I could get additional 20 centimeters drawer so top cabinets still rules let's talk about the price super quick so uh, I have two cabinets each cabinet was $25 each drawer mechanism like all this without the front panel I was about $30 for each one I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and that's all all that 
in that it's just panels, there are no drawers actually there. And this part is just not any secured yet. So uh, the front panels it's a kind of ten dollars range price. And the small one is cheaper, about five, and the big one is about fifteen. Uh, the middle one is about ten. Uh, so what else? Uh, the thing uh, from Fake Stone cost about fifty dollars, and the mixer tap is about the same. The induction cooking top was about eighty dollars. Uh, what else? Fridge I bought used about uh, like three hundred dollars maybe. Yeah, about three four hundred dollars. Uh, but the new one is cost way more, about eight hundred, I guess. Uh, but uh, today is very big variety of good fridges, and you can get a cheaper one and the better one that I got. Uh, I got this one because I thought I will use a propane and it could work from propane but now I will not have any propane in my van so uh, it's no point for this fridge but I already have that so countertop was about $50 uh, this piece is about $15 or so but uh, I must buy the full 3 meter piece and then cut it and pay for the whole piece. I couldn't get uh, the small piece by my measurements. The backsplash was about $50 too, and I have to buy the whole 3 meter piece because they are not sell it other ways. And let's talk about the weight. Someone mentioned that this kitchen is too heavy for the van conversion, but I couldn't agree. Let's see how much it weighs. Each cabinet about 15 kilograms. Each drawer about 5 kilograms and each panel about half a kilogram. Sink 10 kilograms. Mixer tap 1 kilogram. Countertop 12. Backsplash wall 3. Induction cooking top 1 kilogram. Fridge 24 kilograms. So the whole IKEA cabinetry with uh, all the front panels and drawers weighs about 55 kilograms. And with additional countertop, sink, and backsplash, all the stuff, it weighs about 80 kilograms. And with the fridge, about 105 kilograms. Oh, and one more thing. Some people ask me why my camera focus not at the right point sometimes in the videos. That's a very simple. That's because I use this lens. You see? To film inside the van, which is super tight space, you need a very short lens. That means that in, it can view as much uh, field as possible and the normal lenses are not working there. So if you have a 20mm, 50mm lens, it's not working for the van. I couldn't show you anything in a van, so if I will film my kitchen, you will see like a one drawer and that's all. So I bought this lens uh, used for $150. I Im import it from Canada and it's a 7.5 millimeter lens and only with this lens I could show you uh, shit in a van. So you can see something. But the only problem this lens so cheap because it's a manual lens. Uh, I need to turn the focus ring to make a focus like that. You see? Uh, so this lens is not automatic and when you can make a van and you like jigsawing for some hours and making measurements and all the things you um, uh, couldn't spend many time to make a focus on point. Uh, you can say why well, you just buy a automatic focus lens like this one I use right now. Uh, yeah, the great advice, but the automatic focus lens for my camera with this kind of focal length uh, for like seven millimeter cost a one thousand 
freaking dollars and I don't have this budget so I stick with this one and that's all I have for now and it's good time to say that I have a Patreon account where you could support me so I could buy this kind of gear for my videos and also I have a PayPal me link uh, that with that use you could just throw a couple of dollars at me for the filming gear and to buy me a coffee or something. Thank you. That's all for this video. I hope I answered the most popular questions about my build. But if I didn't answer your question, feel free to put it in this video comments and I will try to answer that too. Thank you for watching. Go to see the building videos, the links are in the description right there. Uh, if you didn't see them, and I see you in next videos. Bye!